Welcome back to Hanaberry Farm. This is the IDCTA Winter Conditioning Challenge, part two. We started with part one in freezing cold weather out here in the arena. It's a little warmer, so we went from heavy snow and cold to mud, but we're inside with a little less clothing on, and we're ready to give you some more challenges. You're gonna remember that in the first month, we gave you a lot of gentle stretching. Now we're gonna add on giving you strength and talking more about positioning and thinking about how your body, when it doesn't wanna do something in a standing position, probably doesn't wanna do it on your horse. So we're trying to find those places and where we need to correct or improve to make ourselves more balanced in our ride. So we have several riders with us here today to help demonstrate in our on the horse uh, portion and we're going to start with just reviewing those stretches that we did last time. So take your feet out of your stirrups, everybody, and just stretch down one foot, then the other. Remember, you're gonna do this for a lot longer than we're doing it today. And then you're gonna circle your feet in both directions, making sure your calves are in contact with the horse the entire time. So if your feet are not feeling the horse between your legs, you are incorrect on this stretch. So get them right along that horse and make sure you go in both directions. Make sure you do real circles, no cheating and just pretending the toe's going around. Get into your legs and ankles. So let's review the arrow arm. Arrow arm is one arm extended, hand is open. You're gonna draw your elbow back like you're pulling a bow and arrow, then open the hand to the back, fold the arm, keeping the elbow up, and then slide it forward. Once more, elbow back, open the arm, bend and fold and slide it forward. You're gonna do this on both sides. You can start at walk. If you feel comfortable, you may do this at trot or canter. Everybody, put your raise in your right hand. You're gonna extend your left hand, thumb up, and you're going to fan to the left. So follow with your eyes as your arm reaches to the back. Your back straight, weight centered in the saddle. You're going to do this three times, reaching forward and back, extending the fingers, extending the arm, and really feeling the rotation of your body. Keep your legs around your horse as you do this and your horse moving forward. Switch hands after three repetitions. So now we're gonna do an open leg runner stretch. When you do the runner stretch, we tend to bring our heel up to our bum, but we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna take our hand and grab our foot and we're gonna push the leg back, opening the hip. So the knee drops down and you're gonna push back and reach with your hand backwards, 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 okay? So the stretch here, if you think about it, is that you wanna get the knee as vertical as possible and this should open up your hip. You wanna hold this, if you can, for five breaths. To review the stand and balance position, we did it last time, you're standing in your stirrups, you're gonna let your thigh fall forward a little bit into the saddle, but you're gonna release your hands forward so that you're not balancing on the reins. So make sure you can give those hands up forward and just stay up there as long as you can. If you come down, no big deal, just go right back up again. Now you're gonna stand and balance and challenge yourself by trying to stay up and do large arm circles, alternating arms and staying in that balanced position. Try hard not to use your reins for balance, but really activate those legs. The higher you can reach with your arm, the better. If you feel strong enough, you should do the stand and balance in the canter. You can do this during your endurance, during your interval training, and take some of the time in this position. You're way off the back and you have to force yourself to find a nice equal balance between your legs. This will greatly improve your strength and balance. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I'm here today with Revy, and I wanted to give you an update on the horse portion of the winter conditioning program month two. As for a day-to-day -day routine, keep your horse in a four to five day a week program as outlined in month one. As for the conditioning interval set, I've increased the intervals from month two. Whatever level you chose for month one, stick with the same level. 
If you thought it was too easy, do it all in a standing position. Remember your 20 minute walk, warm up and cool down and good luck with month two. Now we're gonna go over a couple new floor exercises. These are things you can do on the ground. These are unmounted exercises. You can do them at home where it's warmer or in your barn, modify or do some of these. This will help you before your ride and it's gonna get a couple of your muscles moving. It's also gonna challenge your balance on a few of them. I want you to pay close attention because if you feel like you're tight in your muscles on these stretches, you're going to be tight in the same muscles on your horse. That's going to affect your position. So we're just going to go back into our balanced mountain pose we introduced last time. Feet hip distance apart, weight really nicely centered, where you feel pretty strong, kind of rooted into the ground. And just reach up over your head. And then from here, we're just going to let our body come down slowly, reaching out from the top of our head, let your arms come down, and then fold them over each other and bend your knees slightly. You do not have to have straight knees to have a stretch. This is for your lower back and it's a release. It's not something that you're pressing yourself into. So hold your weight down here. Let your shoulders come next to your ears pulling your shoulders down. You don't want them to fall against the ground. You want them to pull back. And you can do a little swaying here. Relax your back. And just let your body sway side to side. And let your head drop down. And you're going to hold this for about five breaths. Then you're going to come to a half lift. You're going to put your hands on your calves or your knees. And you're going to push forward, keep your knees bent, and imagine you're being pulled from the top of your head and flattening your back. Draw your hands up to your thighs or your calves. Stretch your back out into the shape of a letter L. Don't lock your knees. You can keep your knees bent for all of these exercises, especially if you are tight in your hamstrings. Stretch your back out, and then slowly lower. You're going to keep one hand on the ground as you lift the other and as you bend one knee. So if I reach my right arm, bend your left knee. Look up to your hand and switch. Get that nice twist going. Drop your hands. Hands on your legs and roll up. Each of these motions you should hold for at least three to five breaths to get the good stretch. You should already be feeling a little looser in your back. Feeling good with that, okay. Now we're gonna challenge ourselves with a low lunge. A low lunge is when you have your knee down. You are welcome to do a high lunge where you're not resting on your knee, but you can get the same benefits. This is to stretch into your hip flexors, so either of these is gonna be fine. So we're just gonna step one foot forward. We wanna have a 90 degree angle on that first leg, and you're gonna drop your knee, okay? So from here, push into your hip. Think of lowering your hip down to the ground and opening up through the front of the leg. When you're here, you're gonna take your hands in front of your heart, palms together, and you're gonna twist to the forward knee doing a prayer twist. Hook your inside elbow onto your knee, pushing your hands against that front knee. Open the chest. Keep pushing forward in your hips. Look to the sky. If you feel like you're strong, you can do the same exercise in a full lunge. So you can be here. Now from here, take the challenge to lift your body up and open the twist. 
So now we're gonna go back into chair pose. We introduced this last time. Chair pose is when your arms are up, dropping the hip, making sure the knees are over the toes, you're in your chair, but today it's gonna to be a pulsing chair. So you're just gonna lower your hips. One, two, three, stand up and repeat. One, two, three, stand up. And you're gonna do this 10 times. Two, three, stand up. So your last stretch is gonna be called a pigeon or figure four, this is a reclined pigeon. You can do this sitting at work. You can sit in your chair, you're gonna take your legs over the, one leg over the other, pointing the knee down. And if it's enough pressure for you, just push that knee down and sit up straight, stretching your hip. If you can, you can bend more forward and get a bigger stretch. You can do this same exercise laying on your back. You can hook your hands underneath your leg and pull your leg up and get a really good stretch. This is gonna open up all those hip muscles. So you're gonna do that on both sides. Make sure you're stretching that knee down. So this is a great one to do if you're just sitting at work and you have nothing else to do. Stretch those legs out. If you feel like a big challenge, then you can do pigeon in chair so you can find your balance, which is hard to do on an arena ground. <laughs> and you're gonna sit into your pigeon and stretch those hips. Okay, that's it for this month. We hope to see you riding. Don't forget to do your once a week interval changes. And if you're interested, we have set dates for our eventing camps. So contact me at Hanaberry Farm and you can find out all about it. Thanks.